Welcome to The Finest Hour, a place where we celebrate the moments that define success. My guest today is Matt Adams, uh, Accomplished Operations Director of BPL Engineering Group. And uh, you've been integral part of BPL for 16 years, Matt, uh, yep. and welcome on our podcast. So great to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. No, no, my pleasure. And it's your first podcast ever. So yeah. Yep. First podcast rodeo. Yes. Fantastic. So yeah, great opportunity. And let's dive into um, some of your finest star moments. So uh, Matt, uh, it's your father, Mick, that uh, founded the company. It was back in 2004. Is that right? Yep, um, it, was, it was my father Mick who who um, founded the company. He was a one man band at the time. Yeah, um, quite literally founded it on his own. Yeah, through to where we are today. Yeah, we've got thirty four full time staff um, in a custom built twenty twenty six thousand square foot facility. So yeah, that's it's, amazing. Uh, and it's it's next year that will be twenty years. Uh, we're celebrating new, 20, 20 years next April. Next April, yeah. So we're going to have a bit of a celebration at our plant next year. So there's um it's a big milestone for us. Yeah. So it's clear that under your and Mick's leadership, the company has undergone has undergone the significant significant grow grow, and yourself. You joined the company as an apprentice at the age of, is it 16? Did you just mention to me? Quite yeah. early. Yeah. So I, I was 16. So yeah. it's half half of my life now. So I'm, yes. th I'm 32. So I've spent yeah. half, half my life at BPL. Yeah. Um, and you've done everything. Uh, you've been on the shop floor. Uh, you've do, you're, now you're involved in CAD, commercial quoting, project management, pretty much everything, right? So you've uh, learned everything about the company since. Yeah, well, obviously thinking about today, um, you asked me about what I'd done and I, yeah. I, I actually wrote it down. Yeah. Well, and the, the number of things I could potentially have been titled as is ridiculous. It's something like yeah. 30 different um, titles within the business from, you know, press press <laughs> setting and operating, welding, yeah. um, CNC programming, offline, sales estimating, yes. uh, projects. Over that course of time, with us being a small family-run business and me sitting so closely to the the owner, yeah, um, yeah, I, I had a massive exposure to all elements of the business. Yeah, and also I think you um, you've been put through some tough um, times as well. You know, the COVID pandemic. We've got some recessions. Yep. So, at the age of thirty-two, I think you have uh, you've seen quite a, quite a bit of uh, what a business can uh, encounter. Yeah, I, I, for for the time that I've spent in business and the age that I am, I do think it's very unique what mm -hmm. I've been exposed to, um, and that was obviously circumstantial to you know working alongside my father. But that's, you mentioned the pandemic there. Yeah, that was that was a, a massive moment of pressure for all of us, wasn't it? In the yeah. MAID group, um, and us in particular, we 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 had to react to supporting a national interest in, yeah. in producing parts for ventilator challenge. So that was one. Um, moment of extreme pressure actually mm -hmm. i think it's quite interesting because you have a lot of insights from the the being this being a family business yeah uh, for the age you've you um you've joined and obviously the and as you said you have a, a lot of finer style moments so perhaps we yeah. could um jump into some of those um so yeah so as a, somebody at the age of 16 you, you're on your path now at 32 you're on your path to become a leader one day obviously it's yeah. uh, your father founded the business yes it's, it's like a, there, there is a succession right there is Plan. a succession yeah. yeah so he he's titled as as managing director yeah um my title is, is operations and commercial director and he's at the stage now where he's sort of moving into sort of thinking about retirement he's not retiring by any means and i wouldn't yeah. want to rush that because yeah i've got a, i've got one of the best engineers in the country as a mentor yeah. who is a v massive value to us but yeah i i am sort of moving towards um that position now mm -hmm. fantastic and um in terms of like how you've grown professionally and um personally you think on the mic and the last 16 years yeah you have I any comments on that yeah, in, in, in terms of what you said about my 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 growth from age sixteen, there wasn't. I wouldn't say there was a plan from my behalf or his behalf for me to go where I've gone gone to. Um, we, he was a passionate engineer, and I'm, I was a passionate engineer when I left school at sixteen. Um, 
I did end up going in back into education, college and whatnot, but I started working there just finding a passion in it. I wasn't pushed. Um, so he let he your your father didn't say like come on you must join no. me whatever you just wanted to do it at the time. I, I needed money first and <laughs> foremost, like everyone does, and uh, I think probably had the conversation at home of going, you know, I'm 16 years old and I want money as yeah. as all as we all shall do. I go to university? What shall, shall I, do? I do, do? And I had the opportunity to go into a manufacturing press shop because. It was his shop and he had yeah. work available. So yeah. I used to go in, I used to run the presses. Mm -hmm. um, I used to run pillar drills and various other, other pieces of equipment, manual manual um, loading of, of machinery and manufacturing equipment. And then just being in that environment then led me to gain an interest. I had an opportunity to learn CAD, learn CNC programming laser programming all very very interesting latest techno te technology mm -hmm. technological equipment um and then the passion grew there from then because i was interested the camaraderie was great because i was working alongside my dad and uh, you know his team which was well established really good guys really good morals you know f family run business it was i was lucky to be in there because the so atmosphere you was good coming to work every morning oh, oh, yeah. and also learn new and things. i still do and we've still got that atmosphere now yeah. even as we've grown we've still got that atmosphere so mm -hmm. it's um it, it's a really really good place to work for, mm -hmm. on, on all on, on all aspects because we've yeah. one we've got that camaraderie the morale but we've got the engineering passion mm -hmm. and we've got the the techno technological stuff that we've invested in it mm -hmm. always keeps it interesting and our customer portfolio very interesting people to work with so yeah um, and you guys have got a lot of energy to drive this business forward and yeah. i mean i think uh was it four times you moved factories in those um 16 years that you've been there or three times that you witnessed yes yeah, so this the 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 growth of the business has been unbelievable really for, mm -hmm. for for 20 years to to go from what 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 it started as and which it, you remember it was a, it's an unlikely percentage of success uh, stories really of, of people who have done that to where it is now mm -hmm. we have four moves um all of them was extremely stressful yeah um i think there was one particular one that probably you mentioned to me yeah was like a fine moment for you yeah when you you was a uh, probably like a key person in the relocate the last relocation 2018 yes yeah, my, my my management of the move came in 2018 so mm -hmm. that was the, the last move that we'd done at, at which stage i was running operations mm -hmm. so i was responsible for every bit of the move and it was a it was a landmark for us because it executed the vision of mm -hmm. us becoming a turnkey company yeah so each stage in the growth along the business there was always the next step and there was always what we're going to do next to become turnkey and that plant and that square footage we had to get right we had to achieve it in order for us to invest in the kit that we could offer what we offer now as a business mm -hmm. which is you know a cradle to grave manufacturing service for you know press press metal components tool making CAD CAM, laser cutting, fabrication, all of the things that we do, uh, which I haven't actually listed in full yet. Yeah. It's hard because <laughs> as, as an engineering group, we do do loads. But yeah, um, yeah I think, I that think you move. Had a, you had a rebrand at that time as well, if I remember correct. Was yeah, it then? The, or? We, we was previously called Birmingham Prototypes Limited. Yeah, I remember that. Hence, we've retained you know BPL, BPL because yeah. everyone recognized us as BPL. Mm -hmm. And that was our, our logo, logo as well. But the big um, issue that we had, um, it wasn't an issue because, you know, we was known for prototypes, but it started becoming an issue as as we invested in more production machinery and we had the capability, people associated just through name that we was only prototypes, mm -hmm. yet we were so much more than that. Yeah. And, you know, where we sit today, we've got um, robotic weld cells, we've got progression transfer uh, sorry progression presses um automated lasers we've got robotic bend cells for press brake work so we've got uh, an amalgamation of manual um skill sets and also automated 
mm-hmm. processes as well. Yeah. And we'd have people sort of go, we thought you was only prototypes or yeah. we didn't realize you had this capability. Obviously that comes down to marketing as well. And yeah. you know, that's something we've pushed since becoming part of the maid group. And today's a good opportunity to talk that we're not, you know, about our rebranding but that was sort of the story behind that really was we were a prototyping company we still are a prototyping company but but we've moved to production so we just took it out out of the title and was was moved to bpl engineering group but let's go back to matt and uh, what about uh, some of your other career highlight highlights obviously you know the move was a big one Uh, what other career highlights uh, that you can think of so many moments you can think of and i know it's it's hard to point, pinpoint to one yeah. thing um obviously i am I'm, I'm extremely proud of managing the move and, yeah. and the strategy behind that move was the growing the customer portfolio f- through reputation mm-hmm. building a team of top quality engineers um and pushing latest technology forward um by investing we obviously invest in a a competitive advantage for ourselves but we also give that to the customer Mm -hmm. i think all the strategy behind that i'm proud of um in terms of the biggest like moment it definitely probably was the pandemic for sure Mm. just because it was extreme extreme pressure it's extreme yeah it was i've never experienced pressure like that because you know we went from producing thousands of batches of parts per week to you know shut the doors then yeah. six days later having a call from ventilator challenge to say you know would you support manufacturing these parts of course we would you know yeah it's a privilege to do so in in a national interest yeah that was extremely um, so was you there on the shop floor was it, did you take any time off what did took, it look like for bpl probably spent the first t- two days on the phone to the accountant and the legal guys going yeah. what's going on what do we do yeah. Do we shut? Do we stay open? Yeah. <laughs> then we had the call. Then we obviously called guys back in. Mm-hmm. So out of our 34 staff, it was only eight of us who actually went in to achieve the parts because that's all we we needed to do. Yeah. Um, and it was a combination of um, we had la- we had a bit of uh, CAD work, laser cutting. Um, we had uh, ro- uh, it wasn't robotic, but ma- manual press brake folding and machining. Mm-hmm. So we it was just a few sections of our business that was open to achieve those parts um and yeah we went back in and i was responsible for running the guys and getting the factory back open so that's yeah. a, fine, a, a definitely a fine proud moment for me yeah um and I, so I, you, I'm you, work to until you, you you work under a lot of pressure at that time like a lot of oh, people yeah. to deliver you know some of uh, what the, the, the country needed at the time so yeah it was scary but well as well as that personally my, yeah like my wife was pregnant at the time as well oh my so the, so the, the, the personal the, pressure as the well, headline thought, scare yeah. news was that they put vulnerable people and, and pregnant women was part of it as well so yeah i was under that pressure as well and then we had a home birth yeah no way yeah <gasps> wow so was it due to the the covid pandemic? yeah yeah you know that is big i think so uh well done and the baby's healthy yeah all good all yeah. good but yeah that's great that you say about pressure and finest moments that was literally what was going on in my life at that time so that is a lot we had a home home birth home birth birth, had to open the factory back up get get everyone back in so that was that was a that was a a mad one that was a mad one oh gosh um the baby's now two is it son or daughter yeah that's my son so your son you have a story to tell there uh to your son, perhaps as a part of, you know, uh, generational... It, um, it might be a sign that he's, he's, in, he's destined to go into the business. He's whenever, destined to. Like the third generation, we'll see. <laughs> yes, definitely. Hopefully my daughter want, might, might want to as well, before yeah. that she's the eldest. So You never really know, nice, because nice it might be the son might be, oh, involved. Dad, actually, I, I want to go and, um, and sing and be the daughter who will take the reins. You never know. I'd love that. I'd love them yeah. both to get involved, but... Yeah. Like similar to my dad, I'm not going to push it because I think it, you've got to find it yourself. Yes, and you've got to enjoy what you do. Yeah, and even though my dad was integral, you know, motivator for me. Actually, I've not even I've mentioned not mentioned my granddad was in it as well. So my grandfather was a sheet metal engineer. He was an English wheeler. Yeah, um, made parts for automotive for many years. So yeah, it was. I found it probably organically because everyone in my family's done it. Yeah, but. 
I won't. I won't be pushing my kids into it. But fingers crossed, they they, uh, do. they do fancy it. Because this is one of the things I wanted to ask you about. You know, where do you actually take your inspiration from? Like, yeah. so you mentioned close family circle, your father, yeah. probably your grandfather, and you're the people or figures where you like take inspiration from. It's definitely in my family. I wouldn't yeah. pick someone outside of my family for for my motivational figure. And all of them, not not just the the ones who are engineers. We we have got. A very strong work work ethic in our family. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather was an engineer. My dad, obviously, was an engineer and a businessman. Yeah. Um, my dad's brothers were all in engineering as well. So I, I'd, I'd say I take inspiration from them and their work ethic and the progress that our family's made. Actually, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of you know, my my dad probably took it on another level from where my granddad was. Yes. And hopefully, I can do them proud and mm -hmm. keep keep pushing our business in the right direction um, and, and, and progressing things. No, that's fantastic. So yeah. it's the it's the family bond. It's a great story of a family bond and um, a business that will only flourish from here, I'm sure. And it, it is flourishing. And so it would yeah. be, be great to, you know, myself personally follow your journey as well. I know we, we, um, we've met a few years back and I can see like how you grown personally how more confident you are well how, I, I was scared i was scared yeah. of doing this podcast wasn't i to be fair no i i, I knew you would do that it's for per, your personal growth i think you, you do amazing yeah i think that with 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 growth if you talk about growth within a person and business like you yeah. say for me personally every moment has been a growing opportunity yeah this is a growing opportunity the first time we pitched at the customers the first time we yeah. did our 30 second pitch at yes men. yeah they're all things that challenge you yeah um push you out your comfort zone but if you keep doing it um i think you do grow you grow in the right direction don't you definitely so uh, um in terms of um looking back um uh, would you give yourself any advice to do or would you do anything differently is there anything you can uh, not not to like cop out of the question or avoid it but honestly there isn't much I would change because I've had a, I've had a privileged um, experience in the sense of I've worked with top class engineers, I work with top class people, not just in the business on the customer side as well on the supplier side, and interacting with those from such an early age, um, and being in an, an SME office. Yeah, you know. So it, was it, it was even small. was it even um, earlier than sixteen that he was actually exposed to a shop floor? Um, I bet it was. Uh, yeah, I might. I, I probably would have gone on there. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wasn't working. Yeah, um, but I would have. I <laughs> would have hanging out. Yeah, I would have. I would have been in there definitely. <laughs> yeah, but I, I haven't got anything that would change about my path because I think I had a really, really good and unique path. Um, advice to former self, to, advice to my former self, or advice to others, I suppose. Yeah. If I was, if I was advising others, it's just keep asking questions because that's why I think I progressed through the company and I progressed to a point where I had the knowledge is because I was so keen to learn. Yeah. If you keep asking questions. Well, you learn and you also show interest in to yeah. others that, that answer the questions for you, right? I think so. I think it's a marker of when I see people in our business asking a lot of questions, it's a show that they're interested yeah. um, first and foremost. Yeah. And the passion goes from there, doesn't it? So ask more questions would be my strap line, I suppose. Yeah. Just keep asking the questions and ask the ask them of those who have more experience than you mm -hmm. because if you don't go to those people who are leaders around you and who do have that experience you know you, you're holding yourself back so push yourself network i probably should have networked earlier actually mm -hmm. if i was if i was to answer that question if i'd have got out and networked maybe a bit earlier yeah you know, how early are we talking 20 15? just as soon as you can because <laughs> as soon as you can nerves, nerves do hold you back don't they sometimes they do yeah and you know i was nervous to do my first min pitch i'm definitely i was definitely nervous to do my first podcast today yeah but when you do embrace it you you you, you push on further don't you yeah so that, that was my advice to my younger self your, your, to youngest, your, your younger self yeah so was it like the meme networking was one of your first sort of uh pitches did you say where you had to do a no so i've always been comfortable doing pitches because that's me standing in front of the customer talking about yeah. what i know yeah and the one thing i know better than anything is is bpl engineering yeah. so i was always happy to do pitches but then when I, it was coming and standing in front of a group of strangers, strangers. Name, yeah. which was the original format yeah yeah i would have said I, did, I wasn't looking forward to doing that and the first <laughs> few times i've done it was a bit um bit of a challenge but you grow into it don't you and you yeah. learn 
how to express yourself. Fantastic. So I, I guess, you know, the, the lesson learned there is you just have to keep exposing yourself to new opportunities, network, speak to people Definitely, yeah. and uh, reach out to, to people who know more. Don't be scared, scared to ask questions. Yeah, the, these kind of things are, are, are really unique opportunities. So mm -hmm. don't be scared to embrace them. Well done, Matt. And we actually uh going to wrap up now so well done you. for your first podcast i hope you uh, you enjoyed it uh, and we're going to enjoy some time together in a bit as well you can have a drink <laughs> wow I, I did i did enjoy it actually you might, you've, you've relaxed me so matt thank you so much for sharing your journey with us uh on the finest hour podcast your experiences <laughs> and the family um in the family business and your ongoing journey to become a leader of the company one day have been very insightful and and i'm sure they'll be helpful for, for our listeners, it's clear that you have a passion for this industry yeah. and you, you do have a deep commitment to your team. You enjoy what you do. Oh, so, I definitely enjoy it. So by, by, with that, you can only achieve great things. So uh, that's what I wish for you and the BPL team and uh, look you. forward to um, sharing this journey together with you over the coming years. And yep. um, to our listeners, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the Finest Hour podcast. I hope you found Matt's story insightful and valuable. And don't forget to subscribe, like and share so we can share these amazing stories with more people who are looking to, uh, who are seeking inspiration to achieve their own success. Thank you.